What's up guys? Welcome to the first day. It's actually it's technically the second day. But I was gonna say it's the first day. Just because of dramatic effect. Insert dramatic music. Day number one of putting some mass on this ass. Right, babe? Woo! We're doing it! We're fucking in the beginning phase. 10 weeks post-show. This is my transformation from peak week to yesterday. Pretty freaking dope. That's about 18 to 20 pounds difference, which I'm so hyped about. Like I've never had a post-show go this well. And I really, really, really credit to it to the training structure that we just had simply in place. Made a video with Jared on that. We'll link it down below. But I am at 213 pounds. The last time I was this body weight was at very beginning prep. So like, oh my God, you're back to your starting weight already. I'm like, Yes, typically 10 to 12 weeks post show, you should be right around that starting weight, likely with your maintenance calories higher than where they were, calories higher than they were pre diet, and if you do things right with a better body composition. That's exactly what happened. So, as you can see, it's pretty much night and day, especially the chest. Like, how much the chest has freaking grown, and a lot of that happened just over this last 10 weeks, you know, coming out of the show and getting to experience all those new foods and raising my food right back up to maintenance instead of slowly walking up. I got a lot of extra food to not only recover hormonally, get my satiety back to normal, but also be able to tr still train like hard, like hard, take that with a grain of salt because I wasn't doing like low rep ranges and like barbell movements and lifting super heavy with a lot of load, but I was doing a lot of volume. I was doing higher rep ranges of like 10 to 20. I was doing supersets. I was doing intensifiers. So I was pushing sets pretty hard, but not using enough load to where it's really taxing on my joints and connective tissue because since I was so low body fat coming out of the show, you know, I'm a little bit more injury prone. And so being able to have that block in place for the first six weeks coming out. I got to experience awesome food. I got to bring that in psychologically that helped because I was able to like, yo, I was craving this. Cool, I'm gonna get it, you know? And after that, cool, the craving's gone. Like, I'm good. A lot of the foods I was eating were the same foods that I was already eating. And so that drove satiety back up to normal. You know, hunger was pretty high for that first six weeks, but I controlled it really, really well. And I'm now at a point to where like, I, you know, if I miss a meal, you know, my, my food backlog is a little bit. I'm like, fuck. But like, I'm not at the point where I'm so hungry to where like, I just need to eat it this time. Now, I want to keep that consistent amount of eating through this off season because that's going to be important. If I miss a meal in the off season, I'm going to have two back to back big meals and that's going to make me feel so full and want to throw up by the next meal after that. So I'm really going to have and try to have as much consistent meal time as I possibly can through this. But right now, my starting macros of the gaining phase are 525 carb, 225 protein and 70 fat. So that's 3,630 calories. Over the course of the training, as training gets a little bit harder, as volume increases, as intensity intensity increases, I'm probably gonna bump my carbs about 25 a week, see how that goes. And so as things get harder, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more food to recover. I'm really gonna see how that goes. I've never done that before. So I'm excited to document how that goes throughout this. As I deload, I'll probably back the calories back down and rework them back up. So we'll see. Honestly, I think that's going to improve from a, what we could call it a surplus fatigue standpoint, throw ourselves in a surplus and eat it so consistently over time to where it just gets really, really tiresome. And so I think that this will really help my appetite. So we'll see. Other than that, like the last two weeks, I've trained like only four times. I got to take a full week off. I always went to Loom and only trained two times there. And so as I drove that volume super high after the show, because I had all that good food to use, you got to think in mind, like I had been training for the last 20 weeks in a hypocaloric state. That alone was strenuous. The prep itself, getting that low body fat was strenuous. So coming back out, very advantageous position to add a lot of tissue really quickly, in which we did clearly. But after that, like if I kept stacking volumes, Snack and volume, snack and volume. I just never would have recovered, period. And so the week into Loom, the week off from the gym allowed me to truly recover. And it's funny, like my body actually dropped some water, some inflammation just from recovering, just from not training. And I actually look best I have in weeks right now, actually spending time off from the gym. So we dropped volume down to maintenance and the last week was actually just a recovery week. I mean, I just took it off from the gym and now I'm actually sensitive again to the training. I'm sensitive again to the volume and now I'm in a position to where I can work things back up again. So I'm excited to see where this goes. I'm only like six pounds lighter than the heaviest weight I've ever been. And I still have full lines everywhere in my physique. So this is gonna be fun. A lot of mass is gonna be put on this ass and you guys are coming along for the ride. I just realized that I hit legs. 
add zero to one R. LOL. Still, I hit legs. I haven't like trained trained legs in weeks. And I was gonna say pump. <laughs> I don't need fucking pump. <laughs> That's gonna be super painful. So we got Christopher's secret stuff. I'm almost out of this. The last one. The green one in there. Use yeah. code Beyond Built for all your raw products because it's the best pre workout ever. I'm not just fucking saying that. Like this is good shit. There's no crash. There's only 125 megs of caffeine in a single scoop. Did I get that wrong? Mm, there's 22.5 right there. So there's like 150 milligrams of caffeine. And it's in a single scoop, which is like polite. It's perfect. That's like it's a, so good. It's RD approved. And I have a code too. Yeah, so you so. can use her code or you can use my code. What's your code? Caroline. The best of the best. RD approved. Chat approved. That says anything. I think it says something. It's the double stamp of approval. <laughs> What is up guys and welcome to the training portion of the video. If you guys enjoy these voiceovers, um, drop a like and leave a comment and say, all right, hey, do, I, do you enjoy the voiceovers? Do you enjoy more in the moment um, training style footage? Do you like more raw style footage edits? I'm very curious what you guys enjoy and I'm willing to do more of that. But anyway, starting off with hip mobility. Um, I get my hip mobility from Squat University. Guys, like really good stuff really good stuff i recommend it to not only myself but our clients so look up squat university hip mobility or for for the lack of any mobility <laughs> he probably has it covered over there really really good stuff um so after running into mobility uh, we're going to start this this workout here before we go into this i do want to let you know everything's two sets everything's two sets everything's three reps left in the reserve to start off it's always 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 good to start on the lower end get a good feel for the exercises all right get a good feel for the loads pick your loads all right so that way you can give yourself room to progress. If you overshoot your first week, you might be too sore. You might not recover as well. And if I trade everything to failure in four or five sets of everything, hell, I got five weeks left of this shit. I'm going to be fucking dogging it, right? So this gives me room to progress up to two to three to four, maybe maybe even five sets if I can. Um, and it helps me progress in reps and load and volume over the course of the five to six weeks. If you guys have not watched how to build a training program um, video of mine that I dropped a few months ago, we will link that below so that way you guys can check that out um, but starting off with leg extension my reps here really looking to have explosive concentrics controlled eccentrics and a pause in the stretch these can be better technically but altogether they were pretty well um, we did myo rep matching here so two reps of 15 to 20 two sets of 15 to 20 sorry um, so we're looking to hit a amount of reps on that first set and then on the second set, we're looking to match that amount of reps, but it's normal to have a rep drop off. So instead of 15 on the first set, I might get, hell, maybe get 10 or 11 on the next set because it was harder, right? So that I take a little bit of a, a breath, um, rest a little bit, and then finish off that those last couple reps to get to 15. It's a fun intensity technique. We're starting off with this. After two sets, my quads were super pumped. And then we went into Smith Machine squats, which for the quads, oh man, this has become a really good favorite of mine after nailing the positioning. So. First and foremost, you'll see my heels are elevated on that platform a little bit. That helps me get my knees over my toes a little bit more, which helps me stretch the quad, um, helps me get a little bit more depth. My heels are maybe one to three inches in front of where the bar is, right? So instead of being under the bar, they're slightly out in front, um, but not too much out in front because too much out in front, my knees won't go over my toes as much as they need to in order to get a good quad stretch. Um, helping me get deep into that hole, my toes are pointed out, my knees are pointed out, and I'm sitting in between my legs, okay? Not only does this help me reach depth and maximally stretch the quad, but it keeps my hips, my knees, and my ankles all perfectly stacked. So I'm super strong out of that bottom position, and I can explode up without knees caving in, without worrying about my joints being vulnerable. Um, this, these cues have helped me tremendously. As you can tell, I have a super upright torso. I'm, I'm cueing my chest to the ceiling as I come up. Um, so upright torso and chest up is not typical cues you'd see for a back squat, but in terms of 
quad hypertrophy specifically, amazing cues for this movement. Um, try it out, try it out with some low load and see how it feels. But man, I mean, I'm really excited to progress over this exercise over the course of this gaining phase. Now, moving into the last exercise, just three exercises today, guys. That's really all you fucking need. Even though I did two sets, everything, <clears throat> great fucking pump. Um, simply because it was quality technique across the board and I was training within a stimulus to grow. Being three reps left in reserve is still enough stimulus to produce growth. So hamstring curl, driving my hips and glutes down into the pad because it's normal for the glutes to want to take over at the top end range of the, of the movement. So you'll feel a really hard hamstring contraction, especially as you come all the way up, if you keep your hips and glutes driven down into the pad. So that's what I'm cueing. Control decentrics, pause in the stretch, fast explosive concentrics always. Um, this was a fucking awesome workout, guys. And I'm excited to share more of these workouts with you guys and more cues and more technique tips um, as I continue learning more and progressing. <laughs>the gym it's actually the next day it's the day after valentine's day and we're doing our valentine's day tonight where are we going i have an idea but i don't really know you have an idea what's your idea is that at the bellagio i don't know we are going to a michelin star restaurant we've never done this before we're very excited she has got me more invested into the culinary world more than ever i never thought this whole fine dining thing would be my thing I never thought I would like be about it, but we live in Vegas and we're gonna experience that and I'm excited. We have never been to a Mission Star restaurant. You're the food nerd. I know. And you've never gotten to go before. <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. They don't she have has, that in Georgia. <laughs> she has no <laughs> idea what to say on that, Omaha. They have, she has no idea what to expect. Zero, zero clue. We're gonna take you guys along for the ride. Where do you think we're going? What do you think? You never know. Also, fit check, hold up. Look at you. It's giving Blair Waldorf. And this is the absolute body. Wow. Two icons. Go to the strip. You need to be there in 45 minutes. We're gonna grab a drink. It's gonna be great. Have a good one, baby. <laughs> you excited? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Do you know where we're going now? Are you sure? Do you know what hotel we're in? MGM. Do you know what's in MGM? No. No. We're going to the buffet. We're going there. Are you excited? You can eat whatever you want here. See, my thing is I wanted to give you choices. Like, I didn't want to just bore you with like one style of cuisine. You could like choose everything that you can, like everything you want here. And it's, and, then, and it's like really high quality. Yeah, it's a Michelin star. Because after you're done, you're gonna look closer to the Michelin man, you know what I mean? You ready? Let's go. Just kidding, we're going on this way. How'd I do? Are you I'm happy? I'm so excited. Because I wanted to do a Michelin restaurant with like a tasting menu so you could try everything. There we go. There we go. Cheers. What do we get here? A very fancy old mm -hmm. Very fancy. It's got grapefruit bitters in it. There's it plum wine in it. Plum wine? It said plum wine. I don't know if it's actually plum wine.
best night ever. We started with these smoked old fashions, which were incredible. Mm -hmm. And then we got some dim sum. And like, let me tell you about that duck salad. Oh, that so was, good. That was top freaking tier. Everything was top tier. The mm -hmm. service was top tier. The dim sum was top tier. Dim -dum. We had, <laughs> she is literally dim sum. Please put up a photo of dim I sum. Am a dim and what was this? What was that? What, was, what were the balls? Foie gras. Bao buns. Bao buns with liver in them, you think? We we were supposed to listen and we were supposed to like read the menu, but like we, all the food showed up and we forgot everything that we wanted. I just wanted the tasting menu so that we could try a bunch of stuff and we did and yeah. I am fully fulfilled. I've never had a deeper appreciation for duck. I've never been a duck gal, but that was a 10 out of 10. That Chilean sea bass, man, let me tell you, that is, dr drop the mic. All in all, the freaking sea bass mm -hmm. was it. That Hard. was it. Incredible. Shout out to you. In freaking incredible. On this channel, we have fun. On this channel, we get huge. On this channel, we also get shredded. And uh, this off season series, we're gonna show you how to do all of the things. Get huge, get shredded, have fun. We're gonna get huge and shredded at the same time. Fuck it. I'm drunk. <sighs> Good stuff. The gave us red wine too. It's great. Really good. Pinot Noir. It was the best night. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, we have fun on this channel. We're gonna take you guys through the off season. Lots of travels, lots of eats. It's gonna be a good time. Do you have any last message um, for them? You should try duck. You should try duck. You should try duck. Thumbs up this video. Hashtag for the duck. For the duck. <laughs> we'll see you all in the next one. <laughs>